Zones are spatial units in your project. Usually they'll represent a room or a wing of a building or even a block or maybe even a functional area of a building. Zones in 3D can also be used for mass modelling. The zone area is an important component in project calculations and you can customise the way which this calculation is done. Zone dimensions are associative so if you actually change a zone following an update the zones will have to be recalculated to reflect any modifications. This is simply done by going to the design menu and selecting update zones. This is greyed out at the moment because I don't have any zones placed. So if I click on the zone tool, this palette opens up. Once again we have favourites, but we can choose in the naming and positioning, we can choose a type of zone. For example, let's leave the first one on office and call it office. We can nominate a zone height, zone level and a subfloor thickness and we can place a zone via three methods. We can use it manually, inner edge or reference line. So first of all if I just push OK using the automatic method I can just click in the room and it places the zone object. If I go and change the stamp and click in this area it's automatically calculated the area as well. These zone stamps are customizable and I can also move them. If I select the object then I can select any of the nodes except for the center node and using the move sub element icon at the top of the pet palette I can move that stamp anywhere on the project. So if I change this building in any way I just need to go to the design update zones update all zones the areas will be recalculated just fix the slab up there quickly now if I go back to the zone tool each zone in your project is assigned a category this is to indicate the zones purpose to visually distinguish different types of spaces in your project all zone fills in a particular zone category are all displayed in the same color we can also change the way our zones look by going to document set model view model view options over here over here we can define whether the zone will have a category color fill cover no background and we can even show with a fill pattern and choose to show or not show in the zone stamp. These can also be set for individual views in the navigator. So if we go back to the zone tool, next up we can define the floor plan view but because none of the display settings are set to show this at the moment it's greyed out. If I go to the zone stamp I can change the way it looks by altering some of the parameters in this intelligent object. It can be customized quite extensively. So it's just a matter of going through all the variables and deciding what you want to display in your stamp. And we're not limited to just one zone stamp. There are others available, although I only have one loaded at the moment. Once we're happy with that area, we can collapse that and go to the model settings. Here we can choose the material that the zone will display in the 3D window. We also have a checkbox to inherit the boundary wall and trimming element materials. But I'm just going to leave that where it is. Once we've done that, we can close that palette. And then now I'm going to select the zone and I want to show the volume. And I want to get rid of the flooring type. So if I push OK now, that zone is now updated. The reason I've done that is because of a new feature in ArcHead. If I wanted to select a column, we have a number of choices down the bottom that relate to placing this object and how they affect the zones. We've got no effect on zones, vertical zone boundary, reduce zone area only, and reduce zone volume. I'm going to use the last option here, push OK, then I'm going to place that in the zone. Then if we update the zones, 
click on update all zones we'll notice that the zone office has updated so even if we change some things here radically if I grab this end wall if I make it a custom wall push OK now we can see if I go to my 3D window that the zone has got an awkward shape to follow so if I close that again and go to design update zones we can say update zones and we notice that the area has changed and if I go back to the 3D window we see that the zone has fixed itself up and in fact if I wanted to select the zone only to show that in 3D there's a number of things I have to do first of all under view elements in 3D to view go to fil filter elements in 3D we have to make sure that the zone is checked without that being checked we can't see it in the 3D window then once we select the object if I go to the arrow tool let my mouse hover over the zone we can see it's on top of the slabs but if I just leave my mouse hovering there I push the tab key we can see in the info tab the zone comes up now I can select that confidently and go to the F5 the 3D window we can see the zone has automatically updated and calculated the new volume if I deselect that let's just say I put in another wall here I'm going to make it a complex profile once again down here I'm going to choose reduce zone volume once again push OK I'm going to draw a wall in from that side and then I'm going to select update zones again here we'll notice that the volume has changed but the height and area haven't so if I close this off and select just the zone again pushing F5 we can see that we can see that the zone has taken on the attributes of even the most complex shapes and reduce the volume accordingly so we've seen how zones can calculate areas even conforming to complex shapes and profiles the real benefit of zones is when we use that to calculate areas and to actually report on those calculations so in the project navigator if we go down to zones there's a number of different reports there and we can also access more zone reporting templates under document schedules and lists zone lists there's a bunch of different reports that are available here once generated these can be saved as views and dragged onto any layout and of course these will update as you update your project as well under the schedules and lists there's actually a large range of zone reporting formats however if we require more I click on more zone lists and here we have a selection of a few more different types of zone lists now similar to library parts it's difficult to create a schedule that suits everyone's needs so it's probably not a bad idea to learn how to create your own type of schedule once your schedule is saved it will appear in one of the drop downs and it's easy to recall at any future date now I don't have room on this DVD to cover making your own schedules but to get started go to document schedules and list schedules element schedule schemes and then we create a new one we might call this my zone push OK then we can select criteria over here we might choose a zone and we can add elements and add certain things to that and in fields we have available parameters and it's simply a matter of dragging what you require over to this side once done you can obviously save that and recall it at any stage